after being knocked out of the FA Cup by a championship side in Nottingham Forest and Granit Xhaka missing training, Mikel Arteta's need for a new midfielder has further increased. So let's find out today what central midfielders Arsenal are targeting. Also what has Fabrizio Romano said about following Balogun and which Arsenal defender is set to leave in this transfer window. Let's find out in the latest episode of The Transfers FC. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Bavs14 and welcome back to your boys channel. As per, make sure to go down there and smash a like on the video and also do subscribe if you're new as we are basically 1,000 subscribers away from the big 70k. It is absolutely mental. But let's get into the Arsenal transfer news and starting off with central midfield. So far so, this year on Transfers FC, we've basically become Dusan Vlahovic FC. So let's put my man to the side for a second because right now we need to talk central midfield because to put it very simple, Arsenal are going through a central midfield crisis. Because as Gunner Blog has reported today, with Thomas Partey and Mohamed El Nani both away on international duty and Angie Metanaus allowed to go to Italy, Siad Kalashnak was considered as a potential option to play in central midfield against Nottingham Forest. So you're telling me that Arteta was so bare bones in that central midfield that he considered playing a left wing back in that position. This, my friends, is a crisis. Because going into the future, yes, the Forest game was an awful performance, an awful result result we know about that but Arsenal have some very important games against Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur to not have any senior midfielders fit and available is going to cause Arsenal and Arteta massive issues. So in terms of when Nico Arteta was asked on the need for new midfielders he says I want to get the best out of the players that we have. I think it's clear that where we need to strengthen but at the moment it's what we have and with what we have we have to play. So Nico Arteta is basically saying my hand right now is forced but most importantly he understands that Arsenal need to strengthen the midfield and in terms of that the Athletic have reported today that Arsenal do have midfield targets. The issue they have is that most of the players they admire are important to their current teams and consequently difficult to acquire in mid-season. No team wants to lose important players halfway through a season and so with that being the case even though Arsenal appreciate certain players if they want to sign these players and bring them to the Emirates Stadium they're gonna have to put a lot of money on the table. But who are these players that Arsenal are looking to sign? Well in terms of Mr. Here we go for Rizzo Romano he says that Arsenal are working to sign a new midfielder. Bruno Guimaraes is appreciated, but currently not discussed as a January target, as the deal is too complicated at the 45 million euro fee. The possibility of signing Arthur Melo on loan has been discussed days ago, but no talks or contact with Juventus. Three names on the list. So Fabrizio confirms that Arsenal appreciate quite a few players, but let's start off with Leon's Bruno Guimaraes. In terms of your boy, I've made it no secret I'm a massive fan of this player, and there's a very good reason why. Let's just use Guimaraes' last performance as an example. Up against Paris Saint Germain, the team top of league. He dropped in a masterclass, 67 touches, 1 assist, 3 key passes, 4 accurate long balls, 39 accurate passes, 12 round duels won, 5 tackles, 6 fouls suffered and an 8.3 sofa score rating. It was a game of rice monster the class and it was a game that your boy actually watched live. And what I saw was a player that first things first has a tremendous engine, able to cover ground when the ball back and that can be shown by 12 round duels won. But also when it comes to going forwards and being decisive with the ball, a lovely left footed pass over the top to Quetta getting an assist, it shows the Gima Rice also has a fantastic eye for a pass. But in terms of any potential transfer, as Fabrizio Romano says, it's looking very unlikely at this current stage. Gima Rice is a very important player when it comes to Leon, hence why they've set a 45 million euro price tag. And so with that being the case, if Arthur want to sign him on top of Vlaovic, it's going to be a very expensive transfer window. But as they are showing with the pursuit of Vlaovic in the first place, Arthur are being ambitious to spend the money. I'm just going to say let's keep an eye on it. But in terms of other potential Central midfielders will, as Fabrizio Romano has also reported, Arsenal are interested in Arta on loan. It has been discussed days ago, but still no talks or contact with Juventus. I think what this is here is for Arsenal is if they can't get a game right over the line, they're looking at short term alternatives because Arsenal still need numbers in midfield. So when you then have a player like Arta, who even though he's 25 years of age, I don't think he's Arsenal's long term solution, they're just looking at him as a short term answer if Arsenal can't get other players over the line. I think the same also goes for a certain Jorginho Wijnaldum. But in terms of of Arta himself, he has had a very weird career starting off in Brazil, then going to Barcelona, and then going to Juventus for massive money. But in terms of Arsenal Football Club, what do you guys make of Arta Melo? And is he a player that you guys want to see Arsenal sign if they can't sign a certain Bruno Guimaraes? But talking about midfielders out of Brazil, well, according to reports in Brazil, Arsenal, Lille, and AS Monaco have inquired for Palmeiras midfielder Danilo. However, no offers will be presented. Palmeiras, as it stands, are not interested in negotiations because of the Club World Cup. So only only 
albeit a solid transfer would be possible. 20 year old Brazilian Danilo, apparently a player that Arsenal hold interest in. And reports were claiming that Arsenal had made some sort of 20 million euro offer. But in terms of other more reliable reports out of Brazil, they claim that Arsenal hold interest but no offer has been made so far. But you know what, whether it's Danilo or whether it's Arthur or even Bruno Guimarães, right now Arsenal need to sign a central midfielder urgently. I'd go as far as saying it is a bigger priority than sign a forward. Because right now all that Arsenal have is Sambi Lukonga and Charlie Patino. And with massive games looming ahead, Liverpool and Tottenham and Cole, these games are going to decide Arsenal's fate in the Champions League. So Edu Gaspar needs to act very quickly in transfer markets and bring in a brand new central midfielder. But do you agree with your boy in saying that central midfield as it stands is a bigger priority than centre forward? Okay, let's move on and let's discuss Arsenal's pursuit for a brand new centre forward. And starting off with Dusan Vlahovic, did you guys really think that your boy could go an entire video and not speak about the Serbian sensation that is Mr. Vlahovic? But in terms of his awful transfer today, reports in Italy have claimed that Fiorentina are willing to let Dusan Vlahovic leave in this January transfer window. Juventus need interest from Italy but can't afford him until the summer at best. The English clubs hold the power due to their financial superiority. So yes, Juventus want to sign Dusan Vlahovic but these guys don't have the money to put on the table. But in terms of Fiorentina, what they're saying is to any guys that do have that money, we are open to selling this player in this specific transfer market. And with that being the case, according to John Cross today, Arsenal are willing to break the bank for Dusan Vlahovic in January to stop him going elsewhere in the summer. I think that John Cross is actually grown when it comes to Arsenal transfer reliability. And what he's saying here is that Arsenal right now are willing to break the bank to put the money on the table to go gonko and bring this player to the Emirates. But what kind of money are we talking? Well, according to the reliable Sammy Mokbo of the Daily Mail, he says that Arsenal have been quoted a minimum £58 million transfer fee for Dusan Vlavic, while the player will command £160,000 per week after taxes and wages over a five year contract. The deal will also include £15 million in fees to the players camp. We are talking a lot of money here in terms of price tag, player wages, but also in terms of £50 million to the players' agents. £50 million to do what? Sit there and go, yes, no, yes, no. In terms of the same report, Sammy also says, there is an acknowledgement at offer that this deal to Sam Vlavic is expensive, but there is also a realisation that if they are prepared to pay a premium, that they stand a good chance of signing Vlavic, who is expected to be hot property in the summer. So Arthur is saying that we want Vlavic right now and we are going to pay the premium because they understand this player is her property and what they mean by that is other clubs also want to sign him and this has actually also been confirmed today by the athletic who confirmed that man city are looking at fiorentina's dusan vlavic and real sociedad's alexander isak as potential alternatives providing they fail to land erling Haaland. if man city were to enter the race to sign dusan vlavic let's just say it would be a wrap not only can these guys put the money on the table but also when it comes to champions league football and challenge of league titles that's something man city can offer but Arsenal can't as it stands and so with that all in mind, Arsenal must know this behind the scenes, hence why they are pushing so much to bring this player to the Emirates in this specific transfer window. But now that you guys have seen the reported price tag, wages and agent fees, what do you guys make of this transfer? And do you guys think that Arsenal are getting a value for money deal? Sami Mokbo also claims that Vlavic is aware of Arsenal's interest and can be convinced of the project Arteta is building and the Gunners have a chance of landing the highly rated forward if the club can make a competitive financial offer. I don't mind seeing Arsenal spend massive money to bring players but I want this players to be convinced of the awful project automatically. Now yes I understand when it comes to transfers wages are very important but what I don't want to see is players solely sign for awful off the basis of financially only. Wages play a part but ultimately for me the desire of the player is the massive part here the fact that awful have to give in makes me very skeptical of the transfer in the first place. But what do you guys make of the fact that awful need to convince Vlavic to sign for Arsenal football club? Moving on to a bit of confirmed transfer news according to Fabrizio Romano following by the goods move the Middlesbrough on loan is a done deal. Balogun will undergo his medical tomorrow and then he will be announced as a new Borough player. Arsenal have also accepted final details and clauses. Talk started five days ago and now it is completed. Following Balogun on loan to a team fighting for promotion for me, I am all for this transfer. And that being the case of Balogun has proven time and time again, he is above the under 23s level. So him to go down to the championship, yes it is a league below but at the same time it is competitive football. And with that Balogun will grow as a player physically, mentally and ultimately come back to Arsenal as a more first team ready player. And after all we've already seen from a certain Emil Smith throw, who went down to the championship and he played for Huddersfield. Players going down to the championship is proven for Arsenal that these players will grow as players and then come back to Arsenal 
Arsenal far better verse to play in the first team. Keeping it on the transfer news, according to Sky Sports News in the UK, Marseille are in talks with Sierra Kalajnak about a free transfer from Arsenal. Napoli are also interested. Kalajnak, of course, came off the bench against Forest, and yes, he is still an Arsenal player, but most importantly, his Arsenal contract is set to expire the end of the season. And the main issue when it comes to this player is the fact that he has a massive gargantuan Arsenal contract. The fact that Arsenal signed him on a free transfer from Schalke means that he's getting over £100,000 a week. I would not be surprised if Arsenal were to do a squad on Mustafi, and that being cancelling C.A. Kalajnak's contract and letting him go on a free transfer. According to L'Equipe in France, Arsenal are adamant they want to reintegrate William Saliba into their first team when he returns on loan from Marseille, despite the French club pushing hard to make his move permanent. This guy has been on fire, dropping 7 8 out of 10s on a consistent basis, and the guy is still 20 years of age, he's nicknamed the Mbappe centre backs. Of course they want to keep him. But in terms of Arsenal, they've made it clear time and time again in the past, Saliba's long-term future is at Arsenal Football Club. And so far so, when Marseille tried to negotiate any sort of loan with options to buy, Arsenal flat out refused. And you know what, I do think it's vitally important that he returns to this Arsenal team. Him, alongside the likes of White and Gabriel, is perfect for Arsenal. Especially given the fact that I had to watch Rob holding play on the weekend against Forest. With all due respect to Rob, Callum Chambers and Pablo Mori, the likes of Gabriel, White and Saliba are on a different level. Okay, let's move on to the other Arsenal news today. And I think it's time that we actually discuss that performance on the weekend. It was disgusting. It was embarrassing. Arsenal knocked out of the FA Cup by championship side Nottingham Forest. And you know what? Roy Keane actually summarised it perfectly. Arsenal look like Real Madrid, but they are playing like a pub team. That first half and second half was frankly embarrassing and it was not the Arsenal level. Especially after the game against Man City, so many Arsenal fans excited. The FA Cup is here, it's the four Arsenal Cup, your boy called it. And then Arsenal get knocked out by a championship side, typical Arsenal football club. And in terms of the game itself, of course, a certain Nuno Tavares was taken off in the first half and he was fuming, throwing his gloves to the floor, having a bit of a rant. Now I can understand why he'd be frustrated, but at the same time, for Arteta to hook him off in the 34th minute, he was dropping an all time stinker. In terms of his stats, Tavares completed just 65% of his passes in that first half. No other Arsenal player's passing accuracy went below 80%. His passing was awful, he couldn't defend, he was getting skimmed left, right, and centre. He was so bad that Mikko Arteta couldn't trust him against a championship side. But did you guys agree with Mikko Arteta hooking off Nuno Tavares in the 34th minute? In terms of Arteta after the game, he says, When you have nine players out, that's a big explanation to our inconsistency. But I don't want to use excuses. The team I put out there, I expect them to play better and to compete better than what we've done today. When you don't do it in the cup, you are out. And that is exactly the case for Arsenal Football Club. But in terms of your boy, I wasn't actually that angry after the game. Yes, I was very annoyed because I do like the FA Cup. But in terms of the Arsenal performance, I know that most of these guys aren't Arsenal level. If Arsenal had played more first teamers like Ramsdale and Gabriel and Cole, I would be more worried. But with these guys not being first teamers and not of the long term Arsenal quality, ultimately I don't really care. If anything for me, it kind of once again confirmed how poor the Arsenal squad is when it comes to the first team and the second team. And the prime example of the drop off is look at Cedric Suarez and look at Takahiro Tomiyasu. And as Ben White has been saying, Tommy is amazing. He is the best right back I've ever played with. He is always focused. It's an honour to play next to him. Tommy does the simple things at a world class level. He is very alert and he isn't careless in the game. Watching that Cedric performance against Nottingham Forest, all I was thinking was keep Tommy Asu wrapped up in cotton wool. The drop off is massive and Tommy Asu is way too important. But speaking on importance, do you guys think that Tommy Asu is Arsenal's most important player? But going into the future now, Arsenal have in the next six games, Liverpool away, Tottenham away, Liverpool at home, Burnley at home, Wolves away and Brentford at home. Some very, very difficult games, but in terms of our next game against Liverpool, according to the Athletic, the EFL is under pressure to investigate why Liverpool players who tested positive for COVID-19 before the postponement of the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg at Arsenal was subsequently found to have been negative. So Mr. Jurgen Klopp and his team were lying about COVID-19 tests. And would that be in the case the EFL have noticed that and now they have lodged an investigation. But what exactly are the EFL going to do now? I don't think they're going to make them forfeit a game. There's no chance they take away points in the Premier League. The most I think Arsenal can expect is some sort of final compensation. But now that you guys have heard about it, what do you guys make of this entire situation? And what do you see as a justified way for the EFL to punish Liverpool with this whole negative COVID test fiasco? But that is the video very and very. If you guys 
guys have enjoyed make sure to go around there and smash a like on the video and also do subscribe if you are new if you would like to follow your boy on them social medias then the links will be down below in the description but that was the latest episode of the transfers fc and in terms of us it's very clear a central midfielder is very much needed and the gas is over to you and i'll see you guys next time in a bit